I'm Paul from DIY Automate. This time, we are going to be installing Raspbian Jesse Lite on our Raspberry Pis using Pi Bakery, and then we're going to use Putty to configure them. This is the first video we are actually doing things. That's exciting. Let's go. So before we get started, there's a couple of things we need to go over, right? One is we are going to install Raspbian Jesse Lite. I like the Lite version because it doesn't have, you know, desktops installed. It doesn't have all the ec educational software that comes pre-installed with the regular Raspbian um, non-Lite edition. Um, so it's really kind of stripped down and this is good from a security standpoint, less things to maintain. It's good from a sort of storage um, perspective, less, um, a smaller SD card you can use. Um, and it's good from just a general overall uh, manageability. So we're going to do that. We're going to use Pi Bakery to install it. Pi Bakery is good because it allows us to do a headless installation, meaning we're going to do everything on our normal Windows machine um, as far as setup. And then Pi Bakery will go in and burn that stuff into an SD card. We can move that SD card over to a Raspberry Pi and come up with our network settings and things like that already um, pre-configured. So you're never gonna have to actually connect the Raspberry Pi to a keyboard, monitor, and mouse. Um, and because we're gonna use the Raspberry Pis in that configuration going forward, I don't like having to do it just for this one step. Um, and the reason we're gonna use Raspberry Pis without the keyboard, monitor, and mouse is because they're easy to stash, right? So we can we can have you know three, four, five Raspberry Pis in our system, and we can have them somewhere that we can you know communicate with and monitor. However, we don't actually need to you know log on to them physically, right? We can do that with Putty, which brings me to the next thing. We're going to be using Putty, which is the SSH client I like to use. You can use any SSH client you're comfortable with. Um, I'm going to use Putty, and I'll show you some of the things with Putty. Um, so. So that's how that works. A couple other um, small things. All of the instructions that I have here are going to be hosted on um, my blog website, um, diyautomate.me, not .com, not .org, .me, diyautomate.me. Go there. It's cool. Um, Pi Bakery, you're going to have to go ahead and install that. Um, so go ahead and do that before we get started and install um, Putty. When you install Putty, you can go to putty.org and there's a link that'll bring you to this other um, longer URL. Um, but putty.org um, will actually uh, host all of this stuff. When, when you do it, I recommend you get the installer that has everything and install with the defaults because that will install five, six programs. We're gonna use three or four of them as we go. Um, so you might as well just get them all at once rather than just getting Putty and then um, having to go back and get the other stuff. Last thing I'll say is I'm gonna show you one way to do this. And it's a specific way from my point of view. If you watch my architecture video, you're gonna see that, you know, security is a thing for me and doing things in a very specific way is a thing for me. And um, hosting very Raspberry Pis, one Raspberry Pi per service is a thing for me. And the reason for that is we can put something like, um, something like um, you know, the automation server um, on one Raspberry Pi and we can put an MQTT server on another Raspberry Pi and then if we need to replace that we don't have to go ahead and replace you know all of the software and reconfigure everything so uh, that, that's one of many reasons why um, I like this there are other instructions out there that will allow you to put you know something like home assistant into a virtual environment on a Raspberry Pi and then put an MQTT in a virtual environment and that way they're not interacting as far as you know, services they're using. Um, however, again, if you needed to replace that Raspberry Pi, you're gonna have to configure multiple services. Um, this first video is a video that is really um, one of three. We're gonna do the, the normal installation here. Um, and then, and we're gonna secure it a little bit. Then there'll be a, um, an a video of how to secure SSH. And then later on down the line, I'll come back and I'll do the third video, which will be advanced um, security, which I think the first security that we're going to do here is enough for the average home user because um, you're not in a data center. You're not interacting with other things. My assumption is you're not going to be connected directly to the Internet. Um, you're you're going to be in a DMZ at the most and really preferably 
And what I would recommend is you're just using port forwarding. So you're, you're never out there. You're not in a DMZ. Um, so we're going to, we're going to configure in those parameters. So go ahead, install Pi Bakery, just accept the default, install Putty, just accept the defaults and, um, and check out Brew Automation. Uh, there's another website that, you know, has other points of view of how to do this. So if you don't like the way I'm doing it, you want a second opinion, go over to Brew Automation, a lot of videos there. Um, ben over there has a good website and he'll show you some other things. So um, those are some things that I recommend. We'll see how you like it. And um, I'll give you a second to install what you need to install, hit pause, and then we'll come back and we will um, continue on. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and open Pi Bakery, right? Pi Bakery is sort of this WYSIWYG, WYSIWYG um, way of doing things. It's block based. You drag blocks around and you tell um, basically the Linux, the Raspbian installation, what you want to do the f as you uh, install it. So we're going to go to startup F on first boot is what we need. That means it'll run once the first time we boot up everything else we're going to do. And you'll, you'll see that in a second. Um, and then um, it won't run again. The, the other option is on every boot. So if you want to run a script every time you boot it up or something like that, you could you could do that. Um, so we got on first boot and then we're going to go over to um, settings and you can set the password for your Raspberry Pi. Um, I recommend that you change the password right away and I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and then you can actually go ahead in settings and change your host name. This I have found works intermittently. So we're going to have to check it and I'll show you how to change it at the command line as well. Um, I'm going to do mine as haspi because this is going to be a home assistant server. Um, so um, it is my home assistant server. And then the last really big thing you can do here is go ahead and configure your network. Um, drag that down, put in your network name, um, your, your SSID, and then the password for your um, for your network. And then the last thing we want to do is go ahead and reboot the server. So if you do that, that will get you to a point where you can, after we're done writing, we can take the card, the SD card, put it in a Raspberry Pi, it'll boot up, it'll set that password, it'll set the host name, then it'll actually go ahead and join the network and then we'll be able to connect to it through um, PuTTY, which is you know our goal. Um, so go ahead and hit write. You're going to get a couple of options. You're going to get the boot option. Um, I mean, sorry, the SD card option. Um, wherever you put your SD card, that's the one you got to pick. And the operating system option. Raspbian Lite, again, is the one that I recommend. It's it's a it's totally up to you. That's the only one I have on here. Um, so Raspbian Lite will, um, again, no graphical user interface, no educational software. A lot of the utilities are stripped out. Um, and I just think that's a cleaner way to do it. And then go ahead and hit start right. Once you do, um, it may ask you a couple of questions. You know, do you wish do you want to overwrite your card, all that? Just hit yes, and then it will write to the SD card. Um, that's going to take a few minutes, so we're going to let that run, and I will be back with you as soon as it's over. Unless you want me to sing you a song. Yeah, we'll come back. Okay, once you get to the point where write is successful, you can go ahead and close. You can go ahead and close bakery and take your SD card from your Windows computer, um, plug it into the Raspberry Pi, and plug the Raspberry Pi into power, and it'll boot up. It'll take it a couple of minutes um, to go ahead and configure everything, to you know load the OS and configure everything. And then you're gonna have to go to your router and get your IP address. I'm not gonna cover that. Every router is a little bit different, um, but you're gonna need to know how to get to your Raspberry Pi. Um, it's a pretty simple, thing you just look around your router you'll find it okay so go ahead and do that and i'm going to do that and then we'll be right back okay so you've moved your sd card over to your raspberry pi you plugged it in you let it sit there for a minute so that it could all configure and do its magic uh, you went to your router you got the ip address and now you're ready to go so go ahead and start up putty um, type in your ip address into the top of the line. Don't hit enter yet though. And I'll show you why in just a second. 5167015, that's mine. 
Um, and what you can do here is go ahead and save that IP address. So later on, you can just double click and go in and not have to type or remember. So I'm just going to name mine HasPy. It's my um, home automation server. Um, I'm going to hit save. And then when I double click, it'll come up. The security breach thing is fine. We're going to change some of the security settings. Um, let's just go ahead in. Um, the main user or the default user is Pi. We're going to change the name Pi eventually. And then we're going to go ahead and type that password that we configured in Pi Bakery. And it'll let us in. So if you've gotten this far, you are doing well. Um, first thing we want to do to configure the operating system, and let me make this a little bit bigger here. Um, um, first thing you want to do to configure the operating system is um, sudo. And sudo is super user do. It means you're doing things as root or just like root. Um, and you have elevated privileges when this command runs. It's a good idea to do that rather than log on as root um, because there's you know some security implications there. So sudo apt get update. What this does is it will go out and it will download the package definition files for the OS and a lot of things that are installed on the OS. It doesn't actually update the OS, it just tells the OS um, what are the most recent files and what are the most recent definitions for those files so that when we do update the operating system, which is the next thing we're gonna do, um, you're updating it to the most current version of everything. So let this run. This takes maybe three or four minutes. So we're gonna let it run and then we'll come right back. Okay, so once that's done, um, sudo again, uh, sudo apt get upgrade. And this is going to tell um, the operating system to use those definition files and upgrade everything. Dash Y will just answer yes as you go through. Um, so no, no problem. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. That's going to run for longer. Uh, that could be 10, 15 minutes, uh, depending on your internet speed, depending on if you're using a Pi 3 or a Pi 2. Um, I recommend the Pi 3, of course, but um, you could be using the other. And um, so we'll come back when that's uh, when that's done. So a little bit through the installation, you may see this. This is talking about um, the, the pseudo user and how it's configured. We will cover that um, in just a little while, but for now, just hit Q and everything's fine. Just Q and it will keep going. So let it keep going and doing its thing. Okay, so now that that's done, there's just one more thing we need to do to, to finish the base installation, right? And that's update the kernel. Updating the kernel is a good idea when you do an installation because, and you know, from time to time, um, because you want to get the most recent, you know, secured kernel. And um, um, Pi Bakery actually does do a good job of um, keeping up to the most latest version of um, a Raspbian. But just in case, we are going to do that. So sudo um, sudo um, apt get. And then install um, raspberry dash pi. I'm sorry, raspberry pi dash kernel. Um, and then just hit enter there. It should tell us at this point that we're at the most um, most update kernel. However, we might not have been. And there was just, like I said, just a security update that was pretty big. So we want to make sure if there's any more, we get them. So that's it. That's what I consider to be the base install, right? You, so you've installed the OS, you've updated the operating system, you've made sure the kernel is up to the most recent version. Um, and then now everything we do beyond this point, I consider to be um, minimal security measures, right? Um, and the first thing we're gonna do is, if you haven't done it already, go ahead and change your password um, from the default Raspberry to whatever you want. You do that by P-A-S-S um, W-D, and that is all lowercase. If you hit that, I'm just gonna go through it really quick. It's gonna tell me I can't because I didn't, I, did. I don't wanna change my password. But if you did, just type in your, your current password, which the default would be Raspberry, and then it'll ask you for a new password twice, and you're good to go. Um, so that's it. And now we are going to go and 
change the username, right? So the default username is Pi. In my estimation, even though we're not going to connect to the internet, you might live in a, off a, a building, you may have, you know, some security threat, and you know, some person that wants to, you know, just play around. Um, so we don't want them to just know, hey, try Pi, and then try every password that you can. We're going to change the password. It's a it's a slight security measure, but I think one that's fairly easy to do and worth doing. So in order to do that, we need to not log on as Pi. We need to not be logged on as that user, right? So we are going to log on as root. It's something that you shouldn't normally do. Um, and there's other ways to do this. This I think is the most efficient way. And as long as you do it and then, um, and then don't do it often, I think you'll be fine. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we need to do is set a password for, for root, right? So sudo uh, passwd and then root. It's gonna ask you for a password for root. Enter in something that is good for you. And I'm gonna do something that's good for me. Um, oh, I did something wrong there. So you see it says, uh, okay, so password updated successfully. I must have just mistyped the first, the first um, time there. Um, and once we do that, we need to set, uh, we need to set so SSH, so Putty basically can log on as root because by default, SSH does not allow you to, to log on as root. So to do that, sudo nano, nano is a text editor. If you like a different text editor, feel free. Um, it's just the one that I like to use. I think it's easy. Um, SSH, so slash etc slash SSH slash sshd underscore config and that'll bring you into here we need to go ahead and add um add one line so protocol two is what we want we want only that protocol so that's the default that's good there's a lot of other things here you can if you're interested go ahead and look it up on the internet but i'm going to add here um permit root ssh log on um, update by me right? and that's just so i can find it pretty easily next time and people know what i did here and then you just want to do permit root log in um, and then the word yes case matters right so permit root log on is camel case um, meaning the first letter of every word is uppercase and then yes is all lowercase and um, then go ahead and control X it'll ask you do you want to save this hit yes it'll say what file name and the default file name that you started with is there just hit enter and that is there um, and don't worry about unable to resolve host Raspberry Pi um, that's just because we changed the host name and it hasn't caught up yet and we'll I'll show you how to change the host name manually in a little while um, so now that we've done that, we're going to actually exit out of here um, and then go ahead and log in as root. So hit exit and then double click um, on your, your configuration. It'll come up and then this time root and then the password you just created. And you'll see that it takes a second. Whoop. Uh, it hasn't read it in yet. So we're going to have to go ahead and do um, get out of it. We're going to restart the session. Uh, restart the session. Log on as Pi again. Oh. And the password we had there. And we're just going to go ahead and reboot the system. So sudo reboot. There's another way to do that just by um, by uh, command line, but I think a reboot is often the cleanest way to do it. So we're going to do that. It'll take it a second to uh, reboot. And then little trick here, if you right click on the upper left hand corner, um, when restart session comes back, it means it's ready to go and you can just um, restart. So you'll see right now it's not there. We can do it. We can duplicate this session or a new session, but restart session isn't there yet. So restart session shows up. And now root and our password and it let us in. So 
Um, just one of those little things that, you know, it's a little bit niggling, but um, it's fine. Um, it actually, the SSH uh, file is read in every 60 seconds or so, I think, by default. So if you just waited, it would also work, but um, we're, we're good with this. So the next thing we want to do that's pretty easy is we're going to um, modify the Pi account and give it a new name, right? So um, use user mod we don't need sudo because we're logged on as root right so user mod dash l um, and then um, i'm going to do mine as um, ha admin all lowercase you can call yours whatever you want that's just home um, automation admin uh, and then uh, we're going to do dash d right and then the home directory so what we're basically going to tell it to do is we're not only going to rename the username right but we're going to rename the home directory of that user because every user really needs well most users need a home directory um so go ahead dash d and then home ha admin again because we want those to match and then the new and then um, dash m and then the user that we're actually changing which is pi right so user mod change um change the password or change the username to ha admin and also change the home directory go ahead and hit enter it takes it a second and then it's done and that does a lot more than just change the username it goes through a bunch of files um, and copies out or, or replaces the word pi with ha admin so that we have access um, to a bunch of stuff if the other way to do this would be to create a new user and if you want to keep the pi account around for some reason and locked out or something you could do that um, just search the internet but there's a lot of groups you have to add the user to um, and I just think that this is a little bit easier um, so once we do this we can um, we can just go ahead and um, we can oh sorry exit out of here and then we're going to log back in um, as the new user ha admin and if all went well we can type in our password and it let us in so now you'll see um, instead of pi at has that dash pi which is the the id of the machine you'll see ha admin there right so that means that everything we've done is is you know great so the next thing we're going to do is then now go and re-disable the root account. Um, so to do that, um, sudo passwd um, dash l, oops, dash l, root, and it will ask you for your password for the new account. I'll show you how to get rid of that in a few minutes. Um, but right now it doesn't know, sudo doesn't know that you have um, default right to do this. So it's gonna ask you for a password. Um, once you do that, uh, now the root account is disabled. Um, dash L locks the account, basically sets it as expiring now. Um, so that's that. And then we're going to go back into um, sudo nano um, dash etc dash ssh dash shd underscore config. And then... Um, and then we're gonna go and find that line that we created, permit root logon, change that to no. And now the root, root cannot log on to SSH anymore. And that's, I think, important because that's a great attack surface, right? If I were gonna attack a operating system, I'd wanna do it with the highest privileges possible. And on this operating system, that is root. So um, control X and then hit yes to save, enter, and now we're done. So. Now we have changed our username, changed our password, made sure root is locked out. So we're getting there. Um, now we're gonna go ahead so that we don't get that, um, that message to type in our password every time, the first time we do sudo every time we log in, we're just gonna go and update another file here, right? So when we were doing the install, when I came up and it, you had to press the, the Q button to quit because it was giving you a little bit of information when we were doing the upgrade, what it was telling you to do is, hey, we have a new way to um, handle sudo. And um, so to change that, go to sudo nano etc um, sudoers 
dash D is a directory. Um, and then zero one zero underscore pi dash no password. Uh, no pass WD. And this file could be, this is the default file in here and you'll see it has the pi name there. Um, the other thing you could do is leave that there and either add something else to this file, just another line, or create another file. Um, it will read in every file. The system will read in every file that's in this directory. Excuse me, and um, do what you want it to do. But for me, pi doesn't exist anymore. Why would we leave it there? So ha admin for me, um, control x, and then just like everything else, um, hit yes and um, enter. And now we have done that. I don't like using leaving that as pi. I think it's a little bit for later on if somebody were to come and try to do this is a little bit um, you know misleading. So we're going to go ahead and do sudo and we're going to move the directory, right? And that's the way you copy things in Linux, right? It's in, in Windows too, it's just hidden from you. But we're going to we're going to move the directory here so sudo um, mv for move and then we're going to move it from one place to the same place, right? So um, etc sudores.d slash 010 underscore pi dash uh, n-o-p-a-s-s-w-d. That's the file we're going to move. And we're going to move it to etc sudores.d and then 010, you can really call it anything you want. Um, ha admin um, dash no p a s s w d. So I'm just changing the the name of that. So now there you go. It we've renamed that that uh that f file in that folder. Um, next thing we want to do is make sure that the host name is here. Um, is, is where we want it. I know mine is because I can see it, but if you didn't do it before or for some reason it did not work, which I've seen happen for some reason, um, you can actually go to um, sudo uh, nano and then etc host, right? And then if this line here, 127.0.1.1 isn't what you want your host name to be, go ahead and change it to what you want your host name to be. Um, if you didn't change it before, it'll just say Raspberry instead of what I have here. You can control X, and for me, it's just because there was no changes, it went right out. Um, and then sudo nano etc, and then host name. Uh, and same thing here, it's just one word. Um, change it to what it is, to what you want it to be. It should match the host file that we did before. So those two things should match, um, and then we are good to go, control X. Um, and that's really it for the basic configuration. Uh, again, I've made some assumptions. You know, these things are going to be, uh, the Raspberry Pis are going to be in your house. You know, not a lot of people are going to have access to them. You know, security needs to be there, um, but it doesn't need to be data center level security. Um, I will do a video of sort of advanced security, things like turning off IPv6, um, things like lo um, password lockouts after so many changes and things like that. Um, that'll be a later video. Um, so our next video, though, we're going to go ahead and configure SSH to be more secure than it is now. Right now, we're just logging in with the username and password. We can use certificates. I'll go over that. I think that um, that's probably the next thing because SSH is something that we can connect to the internet so that we can control these um, pies from anywhere in the world. That's sort of the goal. Um, so if you like the video, subscribe, like, all of that stuff. Um, again, go check out Ben at Brew Automation. Um, I think he has other ways of doing this that are that are good. Um, and maybe he explains it in a way that you understand better. I'm okay with that. Uh, so till next time, uh, keep automating and we'll see you soon. Bye.